I'm going to start with some semi-rhetorical questions. Now, semi-rhetorical might be a little weird concept, I have just made it up. But I'm going to ask you questions, not for you to shout at me the answers, but just to maybe give your neighbour a little comment. So, what do you think God's desire for North Baddersley is? What do you think God's desire for North Baddersley is? Just have a little thought. Maybe shoot a comment at your neighbour. The next question. Why do you think God planted four churches in North Baddersley? Why do you think God planted four churches in North Baddersley? <laughs> and finally, who do you think God wants to fill these churches with? Who do you think that God wants to fill these churches with? When Jesus met Zacchaeus, the tax collector, in Luke 19, people were shocked and astounded that Jesus wanted to spend time with this rotten little man who took all of their money. See, tax collectors in the time of Jesus, most of us probably know, were hated because they were in league with the Roman oppressors. They were working for the people that the Jewish people were being oppressed by. They come in, they've taken over their holy land, the, the, chosen, the chosen promised land, and they were ruling, sometimes not very kindly. And these tax collectors were taking the Jews' money and giving them to the Romans. Sometimes when you have a bad reputation anyway, you think, it doesn't matter what people think of me, so I'm just going to be even worse. So some of the tax collectors would take double, even triple what they were owed, with the threat of sending the Romans to do something horrible to the household. And Zacchaeus was one of these people. Zacchaeus was one of these people that figured, well, no one likes me anyway, so I may as well be rich and, and not liked, rather than poor and not liked. So he skimmed a lot off the money, and he had a real um, reputation. But Jesus picks him out of the crowd because he's climbed up a tree and says, I'm going to come back to your house for dinner. Jesus goes, and this, of course, as Jesus did most of the time, this offends the religious establishment. Uh, they think that Jesus should be coming to eat with them. And he hears about this kerfuffle. And he says to Zacchaeus, Today salvation has come to your house, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. When Jesus chose the disciples, he actually chose a tax collector, Matthew, to be one of his closest disciples. This tax collector threw a dinner party to introduce Jesus to his friends. Come and meet this great guy that I've met. He speaks in, in a way that I've never met. Uh, I've never heard someone speak before. And again, this causes a stir among the religious establishment. And when Jesus goes to defend himself, as if he needed defending, his line of defence to the scoffers was, it is not the healthy that need the doctor, but the sick. A study of Jesus' disciples would put most of our church's relational issues in stark perspective. Not only did they have a tax collector who was working in league with the Romans, but they had a Jewish zealot, Simon, who his job was to get rid of the Romans, and especially those dirty tax collectors who were robbing the Jews of their rightful money. And these two people Jesus chose 
be his disciples, to be his church leadership team, if you would. He also chose James and John, the sons of thunder. And were they going to be a couple to have on your leadership team? Oh, this, this, this city doesn't like us. Jesus, shall we call down thunder from heaven? Shall we call down fire from heaven and blow them up? Um, no. Calm down. Call your jets. Let's just try and think of a different way. He even chose the person that he knew was going to betray him and spent three years with this guy. Loving him just as much, teaching him just as much, giving him the same amount of authority as he went out serving Jesus, knowing that he was going to betray him. But here's the thing, they were all united by one person with one goal. Unity does not equal uniformity. Unity does not equal uniformity. We're not calling you here to this Anglican church because we all want to become Anglican. We're not, we haven't got a Pentecostal preacher up the front because we want you all to be Pentecostal. Jesus hasn't called us to gather under one roof. He's called us to gather under one Father and one head one purpose, one mission that we are to be united by. I'm Pentecostal, you may not be. Do you love Jesus? Has Jesus saved you? Has Jesus called you to do mission in the village of North Baddersley? If you can answer yes to all of those questions, I'm going with you. I would love to go with you. It would be an honour for me to go with you. At my, uh, at my previous church, we met with the, the local Anglican vicar, and we were, we were trying to get a, a good relationship going, and we said to him that we would love to fill his church. As much as we'd love to fill our own church, we would love to fill his church too, because the church that I came from before I came to True Life Church was an incredibly modern church with drums and bass guitars and electric guitars every single week. And some of you in this room are probably thinking, oh, I wouldn't go to that church. <laughs> and that's exactly right. Which is why there's such a diversity of churches in the kingdom of God. Because, I don't know, one of you from the Anglican church may bring someone to Christ but they may not feel comfortable with the way that All Saints does things. They might feel more comfortable with the way the Baptist Church does things. And that's great. We at True Life may bring someone to faith, but they may not like how we do things. They might like how All Saints does things. And that's great. I would love to see us as a body of believers being so keen to bring people into the Kingdom of God that we didn't mind where they went as long as we knew that they'd get looked after and discipled. I would love to see us filling each other's churches. Because if God moves in this village, it's not just going to be one church that fills up, is it? We need to be ready and working together for God to fill all of the churches. There are four churches because God needs four churches, because people are different. People are different. Language is important. Language is so important. I picked up three um, little lines that went a little bit wrong in some church bulletins, and I've got them here. Remember in prayer the many who are sick of our church and community. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Women's luncheon. Each member bring a sandwich. 
Polly Phillips will give the medication. <laughs> <laughs> the church will host an evening of fine dining, superb entertainment, and gracious hostility. <laughs> <laughs> if they were all from the same church, I think the person who didn't proofread before they sent to the printer is probably not in charge anymore. <laughs> a great friend of mine from my old church is a site manager for a housing company, and his CEO wanted to change the way that the builders felt about the properties they were building. He knew the importance of language. And he encouraged them not to think that they're building houses for their boss, but to build homes for the people that are going to live in them. Just think about that for a moment. What would be the difference between a builder building a house for their boss? Right, I've got to meet my targets. I've just got to get it done. I'm, I'm after my pay packet, and it needs to happen by this date. You would just do the job and not care. As long as you were finished, it was done. But a builder who's building a home for someone that's going to live in it, you put so much care, so much attention to detail in it, because you would know that you weren't just building a dining room that was these dimensions, you were building a room where this family's going to eat together, where they're going to share great times, where they maybe are going to share hard times. But you know that this, fam this home that you're building is going to be a place where memories are made, where people are going to spend some of the best years of their life. And so, currently, when we get together, we're called Churches Together in North Battersea. Churches Together in North Battersea. And I've checked this before I'm going to say this. What would it be like? What difference would it make to how we relate to each other, how we work with each other, how we love each other, if we started to call ourselves Churches Together for North Battersea? If we're not just meeting together to check each other's pulse, are you still okay as a church? Have you still got some members? But what if we were meeting together as a launch pad to spread the kingdom of God in North Battersea, to spread the gospel in North Battersea, to enlarge what God is doing in this place? I want to finish by speaking a bit about Mark 2. We probably all know the story of the paralysed man who was carried on a mat by his friends, four friends, to Jesus. He was carried on a mat because he couldn't get there himself. He, had no, he was paralysed. We, we're not told how long it took, how far they went, but we knew that these people would stop at nothing to get their friend to the person that they knew could change his life. To the person that they knew had the answer to his problem. Now, I'm not going to spiritualise the fact that there are four churches in North Battersea and there were four friends. But, how many churches do you think it would take to carry a village to Jesus? One church can't do it on its own. If it was just True Life Church, oh, we'd be hacking away for hours. If it was just All Saints, you guys would be exhausted. If it was just the Baptist Church, the same thing. There are so many churches in North Battersea because God wants to use so many churches. And God knows that one church alone cannot do it. And just as churches are made to function with a team of leaders, so, so villages are there to be reached by multiple churches. 
working together, all under one Lord, one Saviour, one goal for his kingdom. I love that poster at the back. How the first how that part of the, the Lord's Prayer is overlaid over our village. Because that's our goal, isn't it? Your kingdom come and your will be done in on earth as it is in in heaven, but specifically in North Badisley. That's our patch. That's the patch that Jesus has given us authority in, and Jesus has given us the mission for. We shouldn't expect churches from Southampton to come and convert everyone in North Baddersley. Churches from Romsey to come and convert everyone in North Baddersley. That's our job, guys. That's our job. Together, we have four budgets, not just one. We have four pools of people, not just one. We have four lots of people that have friends, not just one. We have four times greater chance of reaching this village for Jesus than if any one of our churches did it on their own. And so I'm going to pray for us now using the words of Jesus, because they're pretty good. In John 17, 20 to 23. So let's pray. I pray for those who will believe in Jesus through his message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity, and then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus, we want to be united under you. We see in this prayer that there is some some significance to our unity that will cause people to believe in you. And so we want to side with each other. We want to cheer each other on. We want to celebrate when the Baptist Church grows. We want to celebrate when All Saints grows. We want to celebrate when True Life Church grows. We want to celebrate when the Catholic Church grows because we are all growing as part of your kingdom. And so Lord Jesus, help us to understand what keeps us together. Help us to remain distinctive in how we do things, but keep us together in our love for each other and our desire to work for each other and with each other. In your mighty name. Amen. Amen.